what I compared to most is Moana, but the difference was I was in on, on the ground floor. You know, I was, Moana was several years in development by the time I was, I was hired for that. And it was a joyous experience. And I just said, I called dibs on being there at the beginning of the next one. I was so inspired in working on Moana in watching Howard Ashman's masterclasses to the animators. Um, he would sit and hold court with the animators and go, here's what musical theater storytelling can do and how we can work together. And he broke down The Little Mermaid beat by beat in terms of his intentions and um, the way musical theater storytelling can complement animated storytelling. Uh, and I wanted to be that guy in the room. I wanted to call dibs and say, I have a song. I, my song can do that faster than your images <laughs> um, or we can work together on this. And so um, it was really thrilling to, to build it from the beginning with this team. Every time I would go in to record, it was like we knew a little more about her. We knew a little more about her every single time. And that was really fun, especially as somebody that comes from a theater background. It's like that really felt in a weird way. It was like on film and on TV, it's like so, sometimes things have to happen so fast. And in theater, you get a chance to rehearse the character. And sometimes those recording sessions often felt like building blocks towards something that we were going to create over the course of two years. It was really cool. I'm a closet rapper because, you know, my kids, every time I try to rap, they're like, no, Dad. <laughs> so told that at home a lot. So it was so refreshing to have Lynn go, yes, John. Yes, bring, spit the rhymes, brother. And, and he supported me. That, that, that's incredible. I've never seen a rap in a, you know, in, in a Disney movie. The one that went through the most drafts was uh, Mirabelle's song, uh, which is called Waiting on a Miracle. Um, in fact, I waited so long to write it. By the time it was time to record, uh, Steph Beatrice was eight and a half months pregnant with her first child. And they were like, we got to record this because once she has the baby, we're not going to get her back in the studio. And so, I, you know, she gave an incredible vocal performance of that song. And I will always think of the fact that she had a baby sitting on her lungs while she had to have this incredible breath control. And she was literally waiting on a miracle uh, while singing, waiting on a miracle. So I will always, those happy memories will always be intertwined for me. Oh my gosh, well music has been everything for me. It's the way that I've gotten through some of the toughest times in my life, have celebrated some of the most beautiful moments in my life. Um, my family is very musical, like salsa and vallenato and cumbia was always playing, you know, in the background. So, but it, it's funny, it was like I had all of those sounds at, and also Disney sounds like mixed together, like at home. So to, to, to get to see the, my, the actual music of my roots of what I came from be portrayed in this, in this, in this film for everyone to see is a very, very like special moment for me. Colombia is really going to enjoy the instrumentation of it because it's, it's first of all, we had an all Latino music team. Um, you know, the composer of the score, uh, Jermaine, is incredible and she she worked on Coco. And then I uh, I picked uh, Mike Elizondo to be the producer on this. Mike Elizondo has produced for Fiona Apple and Eminem. I needed exactly that level of diversity because I knew I wanted to throw a lot of different styles uh, at this project because we have 12 major characters and they all needed their own musical voice.